Hello and welcome to another City Skylines video. This is a city that had 180,000 population at peak and it has a very simple, very low cost, yet highly functional grid layout that is superior to other grids and achieves high degrees of walkability, cyclist friendliness, and being easy to drive, mostly contained in a single high density 2x2 two two kilometer square tile. So in this video, I will talk about the various aspects of this design. First, let me talk about some mods that make this city possible. So of course, I use Traffic Manager. I use a mod that alters the building population for skyscrapers to be realistic. So that means a lot more skyscrapers carry a lot more people and households. I also made a bunch of custom roads in the asset as editor to fit uh, my needs. In terms of the options, I disabled fires because I'm not interested in managing and rebuilding burned down buildings that burned down due to uh, city skylines. Uh, poor fire truck management. Other emergencies are disabled as well because, well, sirens are annoying. Although for some reason I still get healthcare emergencies, which I have dealt with by implementing ample hospitals. I disabled crime, although that is not really a traffic cheat because in such a density uh, you would have plenty of foot patrols or or since Segway Mounties, uh, mounted patrols instead of uh, car patrols. So this high density simple city, it uses a single city skylines tile. Well, slightly more than one tile. So you can see here, it's mostly confined to one tile. Um, this is a grid design that can be easily adapted to most terrains, but as with most of my prototypes, I do it on a flat terrain so that I can use the um, use the templates and quickly uh, prove that this design can work at a large scale. This uh, city is it stands out in the way that it has no congestion yet no mass transit. It relieves congestion entirely using the um, parallel bike road and pedestrian road um, mixed use path system. If the city is larger, then it may need complex mass transit. And um, so if I wanted to double the city size or quadruple it or make it span the whole map, then it would need some form of mass transit. As you can see, there's plenty of road capacity for buses, although buses would fill up quite quickly. Um, you, of course, also have the option of underground metro, which would be the most efficient way, but also um, cost more. And um, you also have the option of implementing over-the-road mass transit. So for example, we could put a station right here and then have provide access through this pedestrian crossing. Or we could, you know, have staircases on either side. But um, this at-grade crossing would not necessarily be eliminated because you still want the cyclists to be able to um, have an easy time crossing the road. So the only way to eliminate this at grid crossing is to um, provide, is to lift the whole road network up to the, uh, or, or down. So to a uh, elevated road network that is essentially a freeway without traffic lights or to uh, push it underground where the people and bikes and cyclists are protected from the elements, which I really like the idea of. And as the climate gets more um, severe, 
as the planet becomes less hospitable, underground um, paths for people and bikes will become an increasingly good idea. So the four modes of transit in this city are walking, biking, car travel, and taxi. I have three taxi depots providing about 96 taxis, so that's roughly one taxi per thousand residents. Obviously, I am keeping a tight grip on the medallions. Um, there's, of course, also train and airports for exter for intercity connections. But those are not used for intercity trans transportation. So, in terms of the parallel road network, the car road portion is made up of a four-lane road with a uh, divided median. So, as we can see here, this is um, this road is based on the industrial road that is part of the uh, industrial DLC for City Skylines. Um, and every intersection between the car roads are a plain four-way intersection with a two-way stop sign. So the side road, the side and this side has the stop sign, while the main main road does not have a stop sign. Um, it can also be a roundabout, and I actually prefer roundabouts, but there's just not enough space in the game. The game does not let me do roundabouts of a small enough size. So if I wanted to do a roundabout, it would probably have to be this big, and then that's that would not be good. And so I settled for this simple two-way stop design, which works well, but a roundabout will be safer, smoother, and um, work better. So uh, the other portion of the uh, parallel network is the uh, car grade bike road. And uh, this is very important because it is what provides access to all of the um, to the whole city and provides very safe transportation by bicycle. So the uh, bicycle and car road intersections are managed by either a traffic light right here. You can see we're at the tail end of the um, pedestrian phase and then the cars go through and then soon the bicycles will be allowed to go through again. So uh, the pedestrian and car road intersections are managed by either a traffic light for uh, intersections where there's heavy pedestrian bike traffic or it's managed by a simple stop sign for the cars on roads where um, there's very light pedestrian traffic. So this, hold on, that's not an example. This would be an example where we have very light pedestrian traffic. And so the car just has a stop sign. And the reason cars have the stop sign is because you want cyclists to be able to go through at full speed. And so the cyclists don't need to stop, but the car has to stop for the cyclists and the, and the pedestrians. So um, there's also a ring road highway on the city's edge that provides, you know, the typical functions of a ring road that provides quicker access to various parts of the city by vehicle. And uh, along the ring road, I've positioned all these industry buildings. Of course, in real life, you may or may not want industry buildings surrounding your city and polluting it. But, you know, maybe these are, you know, green industries and they're not polluting. In any case, uh, keeping the industry closer to the road means that 
exports and imports are very easy and so that heavy truck traffic really never goes into the city except to make a delivery of finished products. So the Ring Road Highway, you can see it's unlit, but it's you know pretty fast. I set a speed limit to 70 kilometers an hour or 40 odd miles an hour. Um, the speed could also be faster, but because city skylines, the AI, you know, if you set this speed too fast, it won't necessarily yield properly and don't. So I, I think 70 is a 70 kilometers an hour is a safe speed that provides you know th that is fast enough but also provides ample safety which is important for the city especially since this is one of few uh, transport roads that only has two lanes as you can see we have our green shoulder here but and you know in, in real life that would mean that if there's a crash you could ideally move the crash off one side and use the remaining space for two-way traffic but it's not ideal and that's not simulated in the game crashes are also not simulated in the game but you know that's just how it is so we have high speed um a high speed ring road around the city and a principle I'm using is that I want to use unsignalized intersections as much as possible to maximize efficiency and the benefit of unsignalized intersections is that one they don't require power so they work in all weather conditions um, and two they also are more efficient because the driver is generally able to take smaller gaps than you know a traffic light would be able to provide the downside of unsignalized intersections is the lack of safety but that's why um, with these low volumes of traffic it's not really a big issue for the high-speed traffic I, I only have three away intersections so um, that that helps with safety despite needing to do uh, left turns across two-way traffic and also um, I've put a lot of effort into maximizing visibility at the intersections as you can see there's plenty of space between where a driver would sit and their line of sight into the road so you um, so this is a fairly straight road and you would have excellent visibility down the entire length and be able to clear traffic before turning in and then at this basically a blind curve I have stop signs for the main line because I just don't think it's a good idea for the main line to um, blow through this intersection another important part of the design philosophy of this city is that pedestrian crossings are prohibited at car to car intersections so um, an exception would be this at great intersection where one line of pedestrian crossing is in the way of a four way intersection I generally, I generally don't like pedestrian crossings at car to car intersections because in order to be safe you have to look behind you for cars turning right so let's say that you're heading um, from the train station into the city right you're gonna cross this road you're gonna have to look behind you for cars turning right who might hit you you're gonna have to look left you're gonna have to look right you're gonna have to look forward that's that's a pain in the ass and so by banning pedestrian crossings at four-way intersections such as this intersection you can eliminate that risk and then only provide crossings at a 90 degree angle of course on this particular road there's also a very low volume side road but I make sure that this is a side road by not providing uh, zoning uh, by not providing vehicle access to the road on the opposite side and only allowing right turns 
So um, this, so uh, the very low traffic ensures that this road is not, um, is in effect the same as a bike road, but with the occasional car. And then a better example would be this crossing here, where the cars only cross the bike and pedestrian road at a 90 degree angle so pedestrians and cars only need to look left and right before to make sure that cars are complying with the traffic controls so um a principle of course we have high speeds on the ring road and low speeds in the city to um to help you know, manage uh, the. You just want you just don't want cars going fast in the city because there are lots of conflicts, potential conflicts, and visibility is poorer at these intersections than at um, than at the uh, than at other intersections. And uh, low speeds are encouraged in part by, you know, frequent stop signs and traffic lights. But uh, one thing I don't like and one thing I don't do is I, I, I really don't like slim roads and road diets. And that's why I chose this industrial road. Because this industrial road is basically the only road. Uh, so I, that's why I chose this industrial road as the basis for my custom road. Because this industrial road is basically the only road in vanilla city skylines where the lanes are wide enough that you don't feel like a car would have a, or, or especially a truck, would have a high risk of, you know, scraping against another truck. Whereas the uh, default roads... The default roads are pretty narrow, so as you can see in this case, uh, I've modified this bike lane, this bike and car road to be a car or just only road, and then I moved the cars to the edges a bit to help so that they can drive at high speed. But um, in the vanilla game, the trucks would be centered on their lane, and the mirrors are basically be brushing against the mirrors of the oncoming traffic and that that's not good so uh, the one thing i don't like about uh, a lot of things that urbanists talk about is road designs or you know we're going to design a road so that enforcement is not needed because people just naturally slow down because and i don't buy that so that's why i have this big wide road and then what I want is speed cameras. I want maybe some traffic enforcement personnel um, and a frequent intersections will help to slow traffic down without making things difficult because let's say that you know there's a crash on one of the lanes. The other lane, the other side of the road is wide enough that you can have two lanes of traffic uh, going through there um, in you know, so that this this road is not going to be blocked off by a, a by a crash. You'll be able to redirect the traffic around the crash through the oncoming lane. And uh, if you have a smaller road, then that would not necessarily be possible. So pedestrian crossings are prohibited at most car to car intersections and um, of course this may be difficult to enforce so I have a few ideas one is that you would you, you might want some fencing around the edges of this four-way you know this this four-way intersection just to as, act as a physical deterrent against people climbing over and walking around it and then the other thing is that you want alternatives to be easily accessible. So the close spacing of the um, parallel road net network to the car road network means that it's not really that far of a distance 
that far of an extra distance to go to um to take the uh pedestrian or bike road crossing instead of jaywalking at the main crossing but of course even if you jaywalk as long as you don't jaywalk at the four-way intersection if you jaywalk at any point in the midpoint it would be quite safe because you you only have to cross two lanes and then you get a um you know a, an, an island in a, in, a, in a median where or you can rest and then you, you have to walk two lanes and then you only ever have to clear traffic in one direction so even if you jaywalk in the midpoint it's not necessarily a huge deal but um that movement would just not be protected and then this road would be convenient enough and, and straight enough that most people would just choose to use the official crossing so um, to further encourage people to not jaywalk cycling is allowed on the sidewalk so that's a policy I've toggled on and the reason is so that the effort to take the long way around so say you want to go from here to here uh, if you walk then that's a long way around but if you cycle then that's barely any barely any effort and so that would increase the chances that people will you know take the lawful long way around and not jaywalk and then the reason I allows biking despite the uh, this industrial road has a pretty small sidewalk but biking is allowed anyway because the uh, vo traffic volumes on these sidewalks will be very very low since it's um, it's not possible to uh, go long distances on the sidewalk this sidewalk is only for the uh, accessing the businesses it's not for travel I forgot the official the correct term for the long distance travel but um, the sidewalk as you can see you can only ever it, it ends as your block and then if you want to go a long distance from uh, one end of the city to the other then you have to take the uh, mixed use road so cycling is allowed on sidewalks so that people can take the long way around without feeling exerted so at these intersections ideally again there would not be any main road or side road since ideally I would just have a roundabout and every road has equal priority an alternative would be um, a four-way stop but that traffic volumes are low enough that that would just provide an unnecessary um, an unnecessary inefficiency and require extra stoppage but uh, on this map the north and south streets are generally the main streets so uh, these are the uh, so these are the north and south streets I forgot which way is north which way is south but these are the north and south streets and then that is the uh, so this is the hold on I, I I know I named this road so this is the west side so if I orient this that's the east side so as you can see um, this is north and south street and that means that if you want to go from here to here on this road you're gonna to have to stop at every car-to-car uh, -car intersection as well as every pedestrian crossing which could be um, frustrating especially if there's a bit more traffic than uh, what's being depicted in this simulation but and that's why I have provided one east and west road through the center of the city that has priority at all the car to car intersections and then this road also has a slightly higher speed limit to uh, trick the AI as well as you know any navigation app you use to uh, take to prioritize that road if you're heading this way so this road has priority while the roads around it don't so this is the only east this is one of three east west roads that has priority the other two being part of the uh, loop ring road so in terms of lighting on the roads the mixed use cycling and pedestrian path has street lights 
and the reason it has street lights is because of my personal experience on some bicycle paths in the great state of Massachusetts without street lights is that the problem is especially when I'm on my scooter is that braking distances really aren't that good so I have pretty long braking distances but the headlight there isn't you know American headlights uh, consumer reports loves to talk about this that American headlights are bad blah 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 and so we don't have good standards for headlights and our standards for scooter headlights are probably even worse and so in order to be able to travel at full speed at daytime and at night for bicycles and scooters you need street lights and especially for scooters because I don't have a electric bicycle but I do have a electric scooter which is capable of 20 miles an hour but the thing is if you've ridden a scooter you probably know this um, if you've ridden a scooter on a bike path you probably know this that um, bike on, on bike paths the landscaping is done for bicycles where people are sitting down but on a scooter you're generally standing up unless you buy a seat attachment which not every scooter company offers and so if you're standing up then there's a high chance of eating a tree especially at night where you can't see the leaves and so um, having a street light illumination it would be sort of an alternative to trimming the trees to make sure that there's enough clearance for vehicles of all sorts of all heights of all ride heights and the other thing is because scooters have tiny wheels and so any so you have to be able to spot imperfections of the road early um anyway the, the point is street lights on the bicycle road are an excellent idea on the other hand I don't have any street lights on the car roads I've removed them and um, the gameplay reason is because these car street lights often get in the way and they're difficult to remove even with mods and then if you build a overpass over it then the street light might end up uh, sticking out through the overpass and if it's sticking out in the middle of a car lane then that's kind of bad news so I just don't want to deal with that but uh, even in the context of a city road the um, lack of street lighting for car roads is okay because in part because of the uh, low speeds so the headlights are plenty for illuminating all the distance you need to stop as well as the simple layout so you don't really have to know which lane to go there aren't any special lane instructions every intersection is the same of course this could be this would be different if you're adapting this grid to say an island or, or somewhere that isn't completely flat and uh, doesn't have a pre-built grid layout but still and in those cases you would be more likely to install street lights but in general street street lights aren't that important for cars and many you know your free high-speed freeways don't have street lights So let me talk a bit more about the uh, mixed-use path or well I, well I guess as implemented in this game it's not really a, a mixed-use path but um, one reason I'm okay with blending pedestrian and cyclist traffic is because in my limited experience with the mixed-use paths in the great state of Massachusetts you know the blend of people and bikes works quite quite well you know just you know everyone keeps to the right and then turns left when passing doesn't seem like a huge problem mixing this high and low speed traffic of course um, if you get too many cyclists and pedestrian injuries you could also convert the intersections to a roundabout and add a traffic light those are all options so the wide mixed use path helps maximize throughput because contrary to uh, city skylines which you know it, it seems to think that as you can see here it seems to think that 
cyclists can just do this that, that they'll just snuggle up to each other which is not going to happen in real life and so you need a wide bit of pavement in order to accommodate the maximum amount of cyclists and pedestrians wider pavement also means that you can get more throughput in a given traffic light cycle which in turn means that you can have shorter traffic light cycles and get more cars through and um, you know that's just overall better for the uh, traffic flow so uh, the uh, wide mixed-use path maximizes throughput allows reducing the traffic light cycle time and um, it provides plenty of space for passing one thing again on the mixed-use path in the great state of Massachusetts is that on many bike roads there's only enough space between the oncoming lane and your lane for three abreast so there really isn't that much space to pass and that's one of the benefits of bicycles is that oh you get to save money on infrastructure well guess what when you save money on infrastructure it makes things unpleasant so if you have a wide car grade bike lane then that's plenty of space for cyclists to pass it becomes much more comfortable to ride on and you get a emergency road in case you know a car road is completely shut down or in case you need to move a fire truck or something through it and I, I've seen that the um, you know then Europe they do use pedestrian and bike roads for emergency vehicles but it's really not a good idea in, especially in a time sensitive situation to run a emergency th vehicle through a narrow path that has poor visibility so instead if you have a wide road with good visibility then you would have much better ability to respond to emergencies of course allowing uh, emergency vehicles on the bike path isn't implemented in, in, in this game but and that's just a design that would be the case for a real city right so yeah the so I've talked about the benefits of a wide mix, wide mixed use path and for the wide car path uh, I've talked a little bit about it already but um, it allows for unloading so you know in the city cars actually have to stop on the roadside if you're a taxi or if you're you know a delivery van you might not there might not be a parking spot so you just have to stop on the roadside and a wide road allows for unloading allows for buses to duck to the side and allow other cars to pass and also allows generally allows more passing so that um, faster cars can get where they're going without tailgating a slower car um, and it allows you know in, in addition to like car crashes blocking off a road it also allows construction so you know you can cut you, you can repave half of the road and still have sort of two lanes worth of space on the other side on the other half of the road and that's a huge benefit in terms of you know having construction not impact the flow of traffic in any way in any way not causing huge traffic jam so uh, thanks to the low amount of car traffic the traffic light cycles can be kept brief especially at a pedestrian and car intersections where you don't really you know where you you really do need a traffic light because um, if you just have a yield at a uh, if you just have a yield sign at a busy pedestrian intersection then you know everyone has to come to a agreement to let a car through and, and that would not be uh, that would just take a lot of unnecessary consensus which traffic lights help solve that issue and helps um, traffic move more smoother and safer and as I said even though the roads are wide um, frequent car 
Oh, another benefit of wide card roads is that even though the uh, even though the sidewalk is small, because the road is wide, you won't necessarily there will be plenty of space for cars to avoid you, and you know you can fall onto the pavement without getting hit by a car because of because the road is so wide. So that's another benefit. And you can even use you know I'm not opposed to like lane striping to make the road seem narrower. Just don't take away the physical space. So thanks to the low car traffic, traffic light cycles can be kept brief, which minimizes pedestrian wait times. So in terms of zoning, um, I didn't really put a lot of effort into zoning. I just did alternate, you know, commercial, office, residential, to sort of simulate a mixed use zoning environment. But the ideal zoning for me is just a the uh, growing up in Hong Kong, we have these big mall apartment complexes where we have a huge mall at the bottom floors that has integrated car parks, bus stops, taxi stands, and then for you know maybe three or four floors of mall, and then on top we have apartment high rises, and then that's very walkable, and then with those complexes you would cross the um, cross to an adjacent complex through a pedestrian bridge and then there will be a sometimes be a train station underneath very cool and essentially uh, one one thing that I see talked about a lot about in urbanist videos on YouTube which I watch is that you know I think not just bikes has popularized the term strode and he complains about how you know we have all these wide you know North America has all these wide roads that are not good streets and not good roads but it is my opinion that we shouldn't really have streets we should have roads like these wide roads or we should have parking lots which are essentially what you want streets to be just at the uh, at the very end of a um, trip not intended for uh, travel at all just parking lots and with the um, mall and apartment complexes I talked about earlier it really is like once you exit the mall you're essentially on a limited access highway even if it's technically inside the city you're on a limited access highway let's say probably a right in right out only road or if you're in Hong Kong or any British colony ex-British colony you're in a left in left out road and then you're on a roundabout so even though that's not a full freeway it is a limited access highway so you're th there essentially are no streets there's just the um, malls internal parking lot uh, road system and then it dumps you straight onto a highway but it's pr still walkable because you have a completely separate pedestrian infrastructure and that is to me the ideal method there, there's a lot of things where Western urbanists have, have a lot of weird ideas because their idea of high density is essentially still just mid density so they don't they can't comprehend the amount of scale that is truly needed for the most the optimal solution that makes everyone happy basically so uh, <laughs> so if a you know if if I were to follow the urbanist design philosophy this would not be a four-lane road it would be a tight two-lane road probably in this space right here and it'll be like oh the psycho psychological effect would make drivers slow down and you know if, if drivers can't see the blind intersection that that only further encourages them to slow down so it's good actually that blind intersections exist and um, you know we should have traffic light cycles and pedestrian paths and 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 uh, bike lanes on every road, and then you know we we should have complex traffic signals with ten, fifteen different phases, and you know have a pedestrian phase, have a trolley phase, have 
and then have a car phase and then that's just you know that just that's just very complicated and unnecessary this is simple and then the uh mall complex design that spits you out onto a limited access highway that's even simpler except you can't really do that in city skylines because city skylines doesn't have huge mall complexes and um and multiple other technical limitations so um so yeah mixed use zoning is certainly part of the strategy to reduce uh traffic since you know you can just the, the nearest business or office is you know never too far away you don't have to go to an entire different neighborhood and so the demand for longer distance travel is um, reduced so how can we further increase the capacity so further capacity increases can be achieved by shifting the entire as I talked about shifting the entire mixed use path this year maybe you can add a overground or a underground uh, path and that would be the path for most vehicles to go through because for most cyclists to take because it'll be simply faster than waiting at the traffic light um, and then eventually you could even remove you could even remove the traffic light and, and just have people you know climb or descend the stairs or lift or ramp once into the bicycle freeway system and then once they're at their destination, uh, climb or descend back to street level to reach their final destination. Or not even that. You know, you can have entire underground streets. There's no reason you can't do that. And underground streets are a very good idea. So yeah, as I said, uh, you would essentially achieve a bicycle freeway by having overground or underground bike paths. Or mixed use paths and then the grade separation elimination and elimination of traffic lights would further reduce trip times and make car travel even less appealing so another so speaking of tunnels which i like which are good which are successfully implemented in the city i grew up in in, in hong kong but um a, a peculiarity i've seen of in western urbanism is East and aversion to pedestrian tunnels. So grade separation is needed to improve safety and traffic flow, especially grade separation between slow meat bags and fast cars. And uh, in terms of grade separation, you can do tunnels or bridges, and tunnels are generally better because you don't have to uh, displace that as much from ground level since you know you only have to dig it as deep as a person rather than making it tall enough to go over to the tallest vehicle and plus as uh, Elon Musk likes to harp about uh, regardless of what you think of his you know his other endeavors that you know tunnels are pretty much the strongest structure there there is and tunnels are much stronger than bridges at least so that's another benefit and then as I as I said before, as the climate gets more uh, problematic, people are going to need protection from the sun and protection from the extreme cold, extreme warmth, extreme heat. And where do we go? We go underground. We leave, you know, cars are weatherproof. Again, let cars have the surface and put people underground because people are fragile meat bags who get heat stroke. But uh, the thing is, I think Western urbanists often don't like tunnels because of the perceived, you know, they're full of crime and, and homeless people and they're dirty, blah, blah, blah. But um, that's really, again, just a symptom of the med density that affects most, you know, European and American cities. Because in a high density city, that tunnel will get plenty of foot traffic that you're never really um, at risk of you know going through it alone even in off peak, off -peak hours plus uh, quite often the tunnel will get enough foot traffic to develop a e economy of its own you know there would be some vendors on on side trying to sell stuff 
sell food. They might even be licensed and legal. So the problem of tunnels is that they are difficult to patrol since passersby can't see inside. And especially in a mid-density city, you're probably, you know, cops are probably patrolling from inside a cop car. And, and so they definitely can't see underneath a pedestrian tunnel. You could also have a security camera system, but a CCTV is generally unmonitored. And so, you know, if you're attacked, you won't get a response and you'll have to go to the office <laughs> to request your tape. And hopefully that tape can be used to bring your attacker to justice. But again, as I said, in real cities, that's a non-issue because tunnels, all tunnels have enough foot traffic to that um, crime is not a big issue. So as I said, let's talk a little bit more about the car-to-car -car intersections. So safety of the car-to-car -car intersections can be improved at the cost of possibly reducing efficiency by, you know, preventing left turns from a side road, which is the bad left turn, since you have to, you have to clear like so much car traffic. So if you convert these, this one to two right turns only, then that would improve safety since um, cars would only have to check the left in a turn. And then you could still allow left turns from the main road since the main road would still theoretically only need to clear traffic from one, from one direction. And then because um, it's safer than a typical for way intersection because again, uh, pedestrian crossings are not allowed at the intersection, at the car to car intersection, so that you don't have to worry about turning left and oh, you made a mistake and now you're hurtling towards a pedestrian. But again, the best solution is still the roundabout. And uh, as I said, not only should a roundabout be applied to the car to car intersections, but roundabouts should also be applied to the bike to bike intersections, a smaller version of it. As the city expands, there's going to be demand for buses for people who happen to need to go from one end of the city to the other. But uh, the need for mass transit can be delayed by promoting electric vehicles like, for example, allowing golf carts on the bike pass. And uh, those are all my notes. So um, I think I'm going to add some of my typical uh, commentary less footage to the end of the video here. Maybe some taxi routes, some uh, bicycle POV routes, and then, you know, maybe just some general video of the city. But. Yeah, I've pretty much talked about everything I wanted to talk about.